So before we get started writing any code, the first thing we're going to need to do is head over to the Discord developer portal to create a new application for our bot. Uh, we can do this by heading over to discord.com forward slash developers slash applications. And in the upper right hand corner, you're going to see a button for a new application. Let's go ahead and click that. And let's give our application a name. I'm going to select demo discord bot and click create. Now we can see the general information for our newly created application. Uh, the next thing we want to do is head over into the bot section and click add bot. And we'll go ahead and confirm this. And now we have a bot registered with our application. So next we need to generate the URL we're going to need to add our bot into a server we're going to create. We can do this by heading over to OAuth2 and we're going to check the box that says bot and then scroll down underneath and check the box that says administrator. You'll notice when I check administrator, it changes the integer that's set to permissions in this URL, and that's gonna give the bot administrator permissions inside of our server. And let's copy this URL, open up a new browser window, paste it in and click enter. And we should be presented with a page like this. Now we're gonna add it into a server. Uh, the server that I'm gonna choose is coding discord bots server and click continue. It's going to ensure that we are giving administrator permissions of the bot for the server. Go ahead and click authorize. And let's confirm you are indeed not a robot. Once you receive this page that says you are authorized, you can close the tab, head back into Discord, and now we can see inside of our coding Discord bots server, demo Discord bot joined the party. Congratulations, your bot is now successfully registered with your server. Now that we've got the bot set up and registered with our server, we need to start writing some code to host the bot. Uh, you can use whatever IDE is your preferred, but I'm going to be using VS Code. Uh, so I have a folder open on my local hard drive that I've named Demo Discord Bot because that lines up with the name of the bot. So inside of VS Code, let's go ahead and click on Terminal and open a new terminal. And let's issue the command npm init y to create our node application except all the defaults. And we have our package.json created. The next thing we need to do is we need to install the discord.js library. We can do that by running npm install discord.js and hit enter. Okay, excellent. Our library is now installed. We can close our terminal window. Let's go ahead and create a new file called index.js to start holding our code. We're going to start by importing the discord library. So const discord discord.js and let's create the client from that. Const client equals new discord.client. When it comes to Discord bots, all the messages are pretty much handled by event handlers uh, based on that client. So let's create a new one just to start client.on and we're gonna use the event handler for ready. Pass in an arrow function. And we're going to console.log logged in as, and we're going to use some string interpolation here and enter client.user.tag and end with an exclamation point. Now, before we can start our bot up, we're gonna head back into the developer portal and we're going to need to grab this bots token. You can get this by going to the bot tab and clicking on copy token. And let's enter in here the code client.login, create an empty string, and paste in our token there. Let's save the code, open up a terminal window again, and run node index.js. Now see we are logged in as demo Discord bot, and if we head back into Discord, we can see that our bot is online on the right-hand side. Back in VS Code, we're going to add another event handler for the client. And this one's going to be message, which executes every time a message is received. So we're going to create an async arrow function. And say if message.content starts with exclamation point hello, we are going to have our bot respond with world. Yep, you guessed it, the traditional hello world example. Let's go ahead and save our code, open our terminal back up, 
we're gonna need to exit our bot using control C and then enter the same command in node index.js to start it back up. Okay, we're logged in again. Let's head back into Discord and issue our newly created command. So let's enter the prefix exclamation point hello, just like we specified in our code, hit enter, and our bot responds with world just as we expected. So because the bot has access to this channel within the server, it can accept those messages, parse them, and respond to them. Bots function in this way where every single message that runs through channels they have access to, they will attempt to process. Uh, this is why it is important to ensure your commands are set up properly. Next, we're gonna head back into VS Code and we're gonna add a new command into our bot. Inside of the messages event handler, let's go ahead and add another if statement. Message.content that starts with, and we're gonna add a new prefix command of DM. And what this command is gonna let us do is have our bot send a direct message to the user. So we're gonna say let message content equals msg.content.replace dm with an empty string to remove that command from the content then comes in. And we're gonna say message.member.send message content. Let's go ahead and save this, open our terminal back up again and restart our bot. Head back into Discord to test this. We can say dm hello. You can see in the upper left hand corner, I've received a private message from my demo Discord bot. Let's click on that and we can see the second portion of the text that we entered into Discord was sent to us in a direct message from the bot. Now the next concept we're going to explore is handling arguments. In the process of developing Discord bots, you may want to handle the various text input from a server user differently. And I'm going to show how to tackle this now. So let's create a new if statement. We'll choose the command args for arguments. Open the block. And we're going to store the content of the message split by the spaces in between them inside of this args constant. We're going to create a new message content of empty string, which is going to hold the content we're gonna send back to the user. And then we're going to check the different arguments that have been provided by the user to respond in different ways. The first thing we'll add is if args.includes foo, we're going to add into the message content a string of bar. And let's do this a few more times just to get the concept. Args.includes bar. Let's add a string of baz. And finally, if args.includes baz, we're going to add to the message content foo to come full circle. And the final thing we want to do is we want to message dot reply message content. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. Open our terminal. You guessed it, restart the bot. Head back into Discord and let's try this out. Args foo, hit enter. We've gotten a response of bar, args foo bar. We should get bar and baz, and we do. And args bar baz, we get baz and foo, just as expected. Now the last thing we're gonna do in this video is we're going to streamline our development process a little bit better by using a tool called Nodemon. Nodemon is used for automatically monitoring your code as you make changes and restarting your code in case it detects those changes. So let's go ahead and back into VS Code. Let's exit out of our bot, but we're gonna stay in terminal this time. We're gonna issue the command npm install hyphen g for global nodemon. And this is going to install nodemon as a global package so we can use it across all of our projects. Okay, nodemon is installed. Head over to package.json. We're gonna close our terminal temporarily. In the scripts section of the package.json file, 
we're actually going to add a new script for start. And this is going to contain nodemon index.js. Let's go ahead and save this and test this. Open up your terminal and go ahead and issue the command npm start to start the process. And we see nodemon has indeed started and it is watching all of the files inside of our directory. We can test this by going to our index.js file and making a small change. And what I'm going to add in here is a check right at the beginning of the message handler to check the author of the message itself and check if it is a bot. We don't want our bot responding to itself and ending in an infinite loop. So if it detects that it is a bot, we're just going to return from the callback, thus ending the handling of this message. If we save this, we can see that Nodemon has restarted our bot, which saves us the time of having to stop and start with every little change that we make. Now, for the sake of increasing security, the next thing we're going to do is migrate our token into an environment configuration file. So we're going to need to install a new package to make Node aware that that file exists. Let's control C to stop Nodemon from monitoring. And let's issue the command npm install dot env, which is a package that reads the dot env files. Okay, it's installed. Let's go ahead and create a new file dot env. Dot env files are collections of key value pairs that can be used to store secrets and other configuration for your node applications. So let's create a new entry in here and call it discord bot token. We're going to open a string here. And let's grab the token that we had entered inside of our client.login. We're going to copy that, paste it in there, close the string, and save this file. Now back inside of our index.js file, we're going to add a new line all the way on the top. And we're going to enter require.env. And we're going to add .config at the end tell it to look at our local files. So this is going to import any key value pairs inside of our .env file into our process.env constant. So this way we can reference them throughout our application. So the last thing we need to do is we need to go down into our client.login and we're going to remove that string and replace it with process.env.discord bot token like we entered inside of that file. Let's click save. And to test this, we're going to start the bot back up using npm start. You can see our bot has logged in. Let's head back into Discord and test just to make sure that it's working properly using the hello command. And we receive world back. So this is excellent. That means that our bot token is now stored securely in a .env file, and it is working properly throughout the application. The absolute last thing we're going to do to prevent this application the absolute last thing we're going to do to prevent the environment variables from being stored with our git repository we're going to create a new file called dot git ignore and we're going to add dot env to that file when we do initialize this repository this will prevent that dot env file from ever getting stored with our repository which will increase the overall security of our application if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, and share the video. I'm also live right here on YouTube every Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central. For channel updates or to get in touch with me, follow me on Twitter at BrianMMDev or join my Discord using the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.